Hello everyone and welcome to In the Cosmos from the De Anza College Planetarium for May 13th, 2020. My name is Toshi Komatsu and I am your host and the director of the planetarium. Today we'll be taking a look at the skies from mid-May through June, taking a look for some plants and planets and some constellations. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look. Now let's start with what the planets and moon are going to be doing for the next several weeks. Planets generally appear bright in the sky, but they can be difficult to distinguish from stars. As a general rule, stars twinkle, but planets do not. If you take a look at this view here, I'm circling a star here, and you can tell that it's a star because it is twinkling. You can find another uh, bright point there, but it's also twinkling there, so that's a sure sign that those are indeed planets. But I'll give you a moment. Can you find a spot that looks bright, but is not twinkling in our view here? If you look around, you may look uh, over here down sort of in the west, northwest. There is one spot right over here that I'm circling, and that would be a planet, and that's the planet Venus. So hopefully you were able to find that in our view here, and hopefully you'll be able to find that in the real sky. Now we're looking at the sky here on May 13th at 9 p.m. local daylight time, and Venus won't set for another hour and a half. But by the end of May, uh, Venus is going to be setting much sooner after sunset. So it's going to set just after 9 o'clock, and that will be less than 30 minutes after the sunset. So look quickly if you want to catch Venus. For most of June, Venus will actually be lost in the glare of the sun, and it may just be visible right before dawn at the end of June. Now let me back up time here a little bit to a special event that's happening on the 21st. Notice that Venus and Mercury here are going to be very, very close together in the sky. Now, quick-footed Mercury um, usually is very difficult to see because it stays very close to the sun and is often lost in the glare of the sun there. But uh, on the 21st of May, you'll be able to get a chance because Venus, which will appear much brighter, will be right next to Mercury. So that'll give you a chance to see two planets all together in the sky, and they'll make for a very pretty pairing and you can be one of the very few number of people who have actually seen Mercury and know that you've seen Mercury in the sky. If you are an early riser, you can find three planets in the south-southeast before dawn. Back on May 14th at 5 a.m., you can see brilliant Jupiter and Saturn there in the sky, and they make for a very, very pretty pair, and those are two of the brightest planets in the sky. And in this part of the sky, the only thing that will be brighter than these planets will be the moon itself. Speaking of the moon, you'll notice that the moon is just to the right of the red planet Mars. So we get three planets, and on this particular date, the moon there to join them. Now, as we step through time, you'll notice that Mars is moving further and further away from the pair of Saturn and Jupiter. Now, those two planets, they're going to stay together throughout the rest of the year, and we'll be talking more about that in a future episode. I have now reset the planetarium to June 3rd at 11 p.m. local daylight time. If you're watching this before June 3rd, the sky will match a little bit later, and after June 3rd, the sky will match a little bit earlier in the evening. By June 30th, this will be close to what the sky will look like about 9 p.m., excluding things like the planets and the moon. Uh, so what we're looking at here, by now the spring constellations have moved to the western skies. And here is Leo the Lion. Let me go ahead and bring up some star labels here. So we've got Regulus, which is the king's star. And that, again, is the brightest star in the constellation of Leo the Lion here. And Leo is distinctive for a shape that makes up uh, the constellation here, where you've got this kind of backwards question mark shape that forms the mane of the lion. And then sort of trailing behind that backwards question mark shape there is a very nice right triangle that I always like to look for. And that forms the hindquarters and the tail of Leo the lion there. Now, if you were to be looking for this star again, this is for June 3rd at 11 p.m. specifically, but uh, get a sky that matches this time. If you want to look for Regulus, it'll be about 25 degrees above the horizon there. So almost exactly in the west. And the way to remember... Uh, um, distances, angular distances in the sky, is you can actually use your hand. If you stretch out your hand at an arm's length away, 
you can use your hands and your fingers to estimate degrees. So again, stretching out your hand all the way out a full arm's length away, a pinky will appear to cover about one degree in the sky. Three fingers will cover five degrees. And in the case of Leo here, what you'll want to do is stretch out your hand all the way and spread your thumb and your pinky out as far as you can stretch them out. And that will cover about 25 degrees in the sky. And again, that's about as high as Regulus will be right above the western skies here. So take a look for that. And uh, this is a nice handy way to remember how to find angular distances in the sky so you can kind of get a sense of how far things apart in the sky. Now back to uh, Leo and a few other constellations here. Let's go ahead and change our view. And uh, what I'd like to do is to fade off Leo and we're going to move a little bit more to the south here where I'm looking for a star. You can see it appearing here, a star called Spica. And that's a star or that's, that's the brightest star in the constellation of one that kind of looks like uh, sort of a kite shape here, uh, maybe with some a lot of long dangling uh, strings going around it. But that's a constellation known as Virgo the Maiden here. So Virgo the Maiden there. And uh, again, that's more of a springtime constellation. It's getting low in the west right now. But what I did want to mention is that the star Spica there, notice what she's holding in her hand there. She's holding a little grain of uh, wheat there or a, a wheat stalk there. And that's because for many, many years, people would use uh, the sighting of Spica in the early spring, when you first see it rising in the east in the, uh, in the spring, that's usually right around the time that you want to be planting your grain crops. And so the constellations can be used as a calendar, and Spica was one of the most important stars to be looking for for your agricultural uh, calendar there, to know when to be planting your crops. And uh, there were other stars and constellations that were used for harvesting, but to mark different times of the year. So Spica, now it's getting low in the west, but was uh, very important for marking the beginning of spring here. So that's Virgo. Go ahead and fade Virgo off here. And what I'd like to do now is to pan a little bit further uh, up in the sky. There's a bright star there called Arcturus. I happen to know Arcturus is the fourth brightest star in the entire sky. And it's part of a constellation known as Bootes the herdsman here. And he actually is a herder of bears. So quite a brave uh, soul there to be uh, herding bears and collecting bears there. And uh, it's sort of a fanciful view, but I know when I look at the constellation of Bootes, what I'm really looking at is that there's this distinctive shape here. It always reminds me first of a kite. I've heard other people tell me that it looks like a fish. Uh, there's lots of ways that you can imagine it, but one other way, sort of a fun way, that I like to imagine this constellation is if you take these stars here using Arcturus as the tip of a cone, uh, that's something that reminds me a little bit of an ice cream cone there. Now, if you take this star, maybe don't make such an angular uh, connection between the top of the cone there, but if you were to round that out, it might remind you a little bit of an ice cream cone. And I know when I get an ice cream cone, I don't like just one scoop. I like to get two scoops. Unfortunately, this ice cream cone has lost one of its scoops there. And so this neighboring constellation is the scoop that fell off. Now, traditionally, these are, again, uh, we've got Bootes, the herdsman, and then we have Corona Borealis, which means the northern crown. So those are the official names for the constellations. But of course, you are welcome to make up your own constellations and your own shapes and your own patterns, whatever suits your fancy here. So from uh, Bootes, high up in the, uh, in the sky there, we're going to come back down towards the horizon and make our way more to the south. That was Bootes in sort of the south-southwest. But what I'd like to do is move ourselves over looking uh, towards the south-southeast, where there's a bright star there, kind of near the moon on this date, um, but uh, the moon will move around depending on which day you're looking. But I'm looking at this star Antares here, which is the brightest star in the constellation of um, uh, Scorpius, the scorpion there. And you can see the connecting lines there that go up to one of his claws there, and this uh, curving hook 
here, which forms his stinger tail. And Antares is a star that has a bit of a reddish color to it. It's a red supergiant star. And people would often get it confused with Mars. And so the name Antares literally means the rival of Mars. That's ant, like anti or against. And Ares is the Greek name for Mars. And some of you may have known that. So this is literally the rival of Mars. And it was named that because Mars does sometimes appear in this part of the sky. And Mars and Antares, they do have similar color to them. So a lot of times people will get them confused. But you know now that the way to tell a star from a planet is to look for the twinkling. And if I kind of fade off some of these here, you can tell that Antares does twinkle quite a bit. Again, it's a very, very large star. Not just a large star, a super giant star. And that is the official name. A super giant, super red giant star is what Antares is. I would like to also mention that uh, that uh, hook shape for the constellation, even though uh, around here we do refer to this as Scorpius the Scorpion, uh, in Polynesia and Hawaii in particular, they saw this same pattern here with this hook as a constellation that was that is called Maui's Fish Hook. And you may have heard of Maui's Fish Hook because there was a Disney movie, Moana, which came out a few years ago, where Maui's Fish Hook uh, featured prominently in that movie. Well, it's actually a, a constellation in the sky, and that is one of uh, several key constellations that the Polynesians would use to navigate across vast distances across the ocean without any landmarks, without any signposts. But the signposts that they used were the constellations and the stars and the wind and the waves themselves. And uh, at the planetarium, uh, once we reopen, we have a whole program on Polynesian voyaging. So I hope some of you can check that out someday. Uh, Scorpius there is a sign that summer has come along. Again, we're looking at the uh, June sky here, but another sign that summer has come is the last set of constellations that I'd like to share with you. And for that, we're going to be looking towards the east. And I'm looking for a set of three stars, and I can see them on my screen here. We've got Altair, we've got Vega a little bit higher up, and we have Deneb. And these three stars together form what looks like almost a perfect isosceles triangle, a triangle where we've got Vega to Altair, Altair to Deneb, Deneb to Vega. Uh, Vega to Altair makes uh, one length that's almost the same length as going from Altair to Deneb. So two sides that are about the same length makes an isosceles triangle, and then a shorter side here that makes for the third part of the triangle. This is often referred to as the Great Summer Triangle because we first see it in the summertime as we see here low in the eastern part of the sky. But as time progresses, this, this triangle gets higher and higher in the sky, passing directly overhead at mid-latitude locations like we have here in the Bay Area. So that's something that you can see all summer long as long as the weather is clear. Now, each of these three stars are actually a part of uh, three separate constellations here. So Vega is a part of a constellation that uh, looks like this. There's kind of a parallelogram of stars right next to it there. That's a constellation called Lyra the Harp there. Lyra the Harp, it's a musical instrument, a handheld musical instrument, and that uh, parallelogram that I was just pointing to, that forms the strings typically of this harp here. So you can look for Lyra the Harp there. Uh, marked by the star Vega. And the next star is Deneb, and that is part of a constellation that gets to be quite a, a, a wide one here. And there's a part that sort of extends straight uh, over towards the south, and we have some uh, bits that are going uh, sort of up and down. And hopefully it reminds you a little bit of a bird, because that's what this constellation is. It's the constellation of Cygnus, the swan, and the name Deneb actually means tail, and that uh, you can tell here because it is the tail of Cygnus the swan there. So that's another summertime constellation, part of the summer triangle there, Cygnus the swan, marked by that star Deneb. And uh, the last star in our triangle here is again that star Altair, and that constellation uh, is known as Aquila, the eagle. And let me show you the stick figure version first here. 
Usually when I look for this constellation, some of these other stars that kind of extend out towards the south, they're a little bit trickier to find. They're not nearly as bright. So what I do is I look for Altair, and then I look for these two stars that flank Altair. So it's a nice little line of three stars, with Altair being the brightest of the three, and then the other two are about the same brightness, uh, but less bright than Altair. And again, that forms the shape of Aquila, the eagle there in the sky. So uh, once again, we've got Aquila the eagle, we've got Lyra the harp marked by Vega, and we have Deneb in Cygnus the swan there. So three summertime constellations, and as summer progresses, they'll get higher and higher in the sky and a lot easier to see here. So that brings us to the end of our episode here. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a little something. We're planning to do a lot more of these videos, so uh, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. And uh, you'll find more information about the Planetarium on our website. And we're all over social media on Facebook and on Twitter and on Instagram. So do check out the links in the description uh, that accompanies this video here. For now, this is the De Anza College Planetarium wishing you clear dark skies wherever you are. And uh, this is your host, Toshikwatsu, signing off.